something like that to a standard house. You know, they don't have the capability. You know, you almost need industrial power. Yeah, yeah I know this one guy that I follow. He uh, he had to have a transformer, just his, his own personal transformer put in. Uh, I don't know if he had to put it in his yard or he put it on a pole or however it was run. But, uh, yeah, that's that's what he had to have done. And um, they're in remote areas of the country, you know, Tennessee, Montana, and uh, I guess they can get away with it. Yeah, I guess, you know. I know uh, people I know that are going to be building a house and uh, electric service is a concern. And they will give you up to 300 amps without any extra amount of money, but oh, oh, 400 amps and up, it starts to cost, and it starts to cost big time. I have to run an uh, engine at 350 with uh, 10 uh, alternators on it. Yeah, or you could do that. There you go. Hello, Rooster. Hello. Can't make watts without volts and amps. There he is. County wide. Radio. Hello, Classic Radio Roundup. Top of the evening, all. Who's all out there? I hear Bagger. I hear the Alley Cat. Rooster, who else is in there? I'm in here too. Blue Max. Blue Max, I heard 433. Three. Hello, Floyd. How you doing, Pete? <clears throat> Everybody's sounding good tonight so far. Oh, yeah. Hello, Wayne. How are you? Hey, okay. What are you doing for uh, Antenna Oz? A Shakespeare right now. Aha, I knew you had to be doing something because you're an S9. Is that right, Heath? I had to untie the one end of the 40 meter antenna. Well, at least you got it working there. There's a breaker. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I was wondering, did you guys ever hear from Shamrock? I, I was wondering if it's Renegade, whatever. I caught up with him. But I forgot, you, you know, I, I forgot Dave even knows Shamrock. He was neighbors with him. Is he still around? Shamrock passed away several years ago. Are you serious? Uh, somebody mentioned him the other day on the CB. I was talking to somebody. And they, and they said they got a radio from Shamrock. He said, do you know Shamrock? I said, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, I didn't know that. Man. Yeah, I wonder if it's a different Shamrock. We're talking about Steve, red-headed, Norristown Shamrock, right? Yeah, so you still live near Dave. That lived up in East Norton. Yes, he passed away several years ago. I, I don't remember how many now. At least five or more. I didn't even know about it, man. Yeah, well, you're not alone on that score. I was there plenty myself. <laughs> he was fun to hang out with. Yeah, it was the bottomless beer glass. He'd never let that sucker empty on you. <laughs> yeah, you've been there. <laughs> Man, what do you do? He say, "What do you want? A, a twelve, a sixteen, or a 20? Yeah, he's sitting around in his wife beater and coochie shorts, and you're coming in from winter time, and you know after a little while, you were you were down to like as little as you could get. Uh, <laughs> man, got rid of 
rest his soul. I did not know about that. Yeah, yeah, I went to his funeral and all. I was, I saw him when he was in the hospital just before he died, so I did get to say goodbye to him. Okay, Roger, did you, uh, what did, do you know what he passed from? Yeah, lung cancer. Oh, uh, yeah, he smoked cigarettes. One after the other. Yeah, I know. That's why I said it like that. But yeah, yeah, he left me with some good memories, that's for sure. He was a character. That's for sure. Yeah, I'll get back with you guys, man. I just pulled up at my location. I got to get out. I'll talk to you a little later. I'll try to get back in here. All righty, then. Classic Radio Roundup rolls on. I'll be listening from a distance. I'm out. Hey, Mr. Texas here. Hey, Mr. Fix-It. Who's that, Goose? I hear that radio out in the distance. Who is that? 45. Who? 45? Yeah. I'm not the Mud Duck. You're the Mud Duck. The funny thing is, I can hear him tonight. I can hear him too. Yeah, he's grassing it to me tonight. Grasser. Oh, I hear you now. Stay on top of them hills. You go down them valleys, I lose you. Yeah, your audio is good now. It did fall out on you on your last transmission before I started talking uh, with Floyd. Uh, that was because I, I moved my finger on the key. Yeah, I, I could still hear what you were saying, but it dropped out. And I guess you're having microphone push to talk issues. Yeah. The old slip of the finger, huh? Yeah, you better watch where that finger slips and get you in trouble. Sure has. <laughs> 20 dB preamp is on now. So what's everybody running tonight? 23 Channel SPE Trinidad and a plus two. Plus three. Okay. That's the left. I'm going to do a little test right here. As I listened to this radio last week on the video game, I went like, oh my God, a pity. So I'm going to change capacitors here and we'll see what that does for it. Well, I'm going to test your, uh, your radio way back skills there, Dave. TRC 56. I, I think so. Yeah, seems that way. Okay, maybe we'll do that. I'm just holding it in here. Uh, okay, TRC-56. That's the 23-channel telephone here in set radio, isn't it? Damn, you are good. Yeah, and then they made a 40-channel version called the 456. Aha, that's why you can remember it, because they were similar numbers. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, I still can't remember all of them. But yep, yep, the CB Phone 23, TRC-56. So everything that went 40 channel had a 4 in front of the number? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, there we go, we're back to yeah, it, it, it wasn't necessarily a one-for-one -one correlation, but uh, they were close. Well, 
I think that applies, if anything, to bases or mobiles. But walkie-talkies, I had a, I still have it, actually, a TRC-4, no, I mean, a 221, a 221 40-channel walkie-talkie. Yeah, you're right. So it's half the size. Yeah, I mean, the 40 Ouch. Ouch, you're squealing like a Hatfield. Yeah, I don't know why that's doing that. That's weird. But yeah, the walkie-talkies were, didn't apply. That was a different rule for some reason. So were all the 23-channel realistics two-digit numbers, or no? It's hard to get an answer when all you do is go, wee. I don't know why it's doing that. Yeah, I'm holding this capacitor in place. I should probably, I should probably tax on it. It's not liking the capacitance. It's not liking your fingers. It's not liking something. It's not liking me. So anyway, back to the question. Just noticed something on the CB phone. Not that I use it that much, but I didn't notice it before that the S meter backlight when you transmit goes red and then module it's like the module the whole the whole light, the whole meter is modulation meter and in, in intensity of light. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Well, I, if you insist that I do, I do. If you insist that I got a grip on your lip, bring it over here. I'll give it a twist. Shamrock. Because he died and sold the house. Well, that's not even accurately true. He had sold the house, moved into an apartment before he passed. So I think it was a year or two he was in an apartment. He moved out of his house. Yeah, he, he sold it and moved into an apartment. What's that? He sold his house and moved into an apartment. Oh, okay. Uh, he moved into an apartment? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, them apartments on, I think it's Markley Street, not too far from his house. If you're going south on the left-hand side, that apartment block area. You better get some ears in that mobile, because I hear you fine. If you're not hearing me, you got problems. I'm not a backdoor man. Can't you hear Goose? Not right at the moment. I did earlier. Well, I, I can hear him now, but he can't seem to hear me. <laughs> Why is he doing that? I don't know. At least you know it.
<laughs> oh no. But it almost seems like you're you're doing it for your you know, to be a noise toy or something. Oh hell no. Is my modulation level good on this C B phone with the with the uh, Silver Eagle? Yeah, I'm not using that handset, sorry. I don't blame you. Those things are crap. Yeah, it's not stock telephone night. No. Yeah, well, if we have stock CB radio telephone night, I don't think there'll be that many participants. I would have never bought it. I would have never, ever, I never wanted to buy one. I avoided them. I'd seen them for cheap at flea markets and always walked past, never wanted one. My uh, my stepfather gave it to me. So I was like, well, if you're going to give it to me, I'll take it. Yeah, you better investigate that because you can't get out a full sentence. I've been there and done that. What pissed me off? <laughs> well, I'm sure I've done that too. I don't think so. Not ever, not once, not even a little annoyed. Maybe slightly annoyed, never pissed off. All right. Well, well, that that's good then. If I only ever slightly annoyed you, that's okay. I don't, you know, never intend to piss anybody off. Well, actually, if I do intend to piss somebody off, you pretty much know that I'm trying to. Yeah, there you go. I just moved the speaker case. Maybe that was causing me a problem. We'll see if this thing uh, decides to behave itself now. Speaker case? How's that affect your microphone squeal? It's when you bring it up. That's weird, because so you're not really changing anything. You're keying up, you're starting to talk, and then it squeals. Yeah. Too much audio. Oh, I can't do FM with this radio. And it's not your normal feedback kind of squeal. Like it's one of them squeals when when you're using a four wire mic on a six wire radio or something. Yeah, or or a walkie talkie, uh, you know, call signal or something. It's, it's, and it's like it's not like you know petering on the edge. Like oh, a little bit of squeal, a little bit of squeal, a little too much squeal. No, it's like either not. <laughs> That's bizarre. I guess maybe I'll have to put the original capacitor back in, because I think that started the whole thing. BC one in deliverance squeals. Maybe I'll just go with a 2.2 microfarad instead of a What did you start? What did it start out with originally? A point, a point two two. Yeah, for some reason it doesn't seem to like that extra capacitance. No, although I am at a loss to explain why.
It seems to have a mind of its own. Yeah. The pin not making full contact and coming ungrounded or something? Now you can't get rid of it. All right, I'm just gonna change this cap. Yeah, we can't go through classic radio roundup all night. I mean, experimentation and trying to troubleshoot is great, but not for two hours. Hey, Pete. Hey, who's hollering at me? Yeah, I'm at home, and I do have a preamp on, but with a preamp on, you give me an S5. I don't know how strong you'd be without the preamp, but that's where it is now. Okay, I got one question for you. When you're, when you're on vacation and you run your 60-meter setup, do you end feed the, the radio and your middle feed? Well, it wasn't 60 meters. It was 40 meters, but okay. It was a, a regular old dipole, center-fed Equal ends on either side, center fed dipole. Use an RG675 ohm coax. Okay, I was wondering. Well, I'm glad I could answer your question. Hey, so what did you learn? This, this, this radio is a standing radio. It's a Robin GT. I pulled it out of the, out of the box. A Robin what? GT7C. It's a scanning uh, CD. 23 channel. Roger, roger. All right. Uh, did you see the video gate on, on my camping setup, or, or how, how did you come up with this question? Well, I heard you talking about going, you know, before you left. A couple times, I heard you talking about it. So, no, yeah, I was just wondering. Oh, Roger. Yeah, 10-4. No, I just went with the simplest, the easiest arrangement to go camping with, you know. Yeah, yeah, I just went with a simple single band dipole, planning on working a single band. I didn't want to have to bring a tuner along because I was, you know, camping with motorcycles. So, you know, space is limited and you got to, you know, bring be as minimalist as possible. And I wanted to be minimalist as possible. So 40 meter resonant dipole fit the bill and it worked really well. I'm glad at least I got some video gate of that, because that, that was that's one for posterity. That was fun. What the squeal? No. You can't hear Blue Max, can you? No, the beams I had him. Hey, I'll check that out. I I go around drunk on grumpy zero in a while. I'll I'll check out that video gate. Oh uh, unless somebody else posts it on Grumpy's, I don't know how it gets there, because I don't. Yeah, yeah, I believe there is, but I've since uh, forgotten my password, and there's no administrator to uh, to uh, reset my password, so I can't get in anymore. No, the administrator doesn't have the ability to reset your password. Well, you know, the owner or whoever, there's nobody, there's nobody that can, administrator or otherwise. Well, maybe maybe my terminology is wrong, but at some point, somewhere along the line, there must have been somebody that could. No. The way Pro Boards is designed, it does not uh, allow for administrators to change passwords, uh, some kind of security thing. The only thing you can do is uh, delete your account. Well, I can delete your account, and, and then uh, you can apply for another one. 
Yeah, maybe if I think about it, I'll try and uh, try and ha hack hack previous passwords. I may be able to come up with it if I try hard enough. And, and my squeal goes away when I flip the amp off. Hmm. Got any uh, ferrite chokes you can put on your mic cord to give it a try? I got them ones uh, that you, Radio Shack used to sell, the split ones. You know, like a rectangle, and you, you pop the plastic cover off of it, and they split into two pieces and put it on the wires. I got a bunch of them around here. I love them things. Yeah, my coax was, like, wrapped around in a weird position, and it could have been a source of problems here. Let's see. What's, what's the SWR look like here? And just when you thought you had things solved. Yeah. It just comes out nowhere. And then I can do that again. And, yeah. I think I have fair right cores wrapped around everything but myself. Yeah, I put it on all, not all, but most of my microphones. And then I got a couple of spares in case I need it. What's that, Blue Max? Those ferrite things don't do a damn thing for ED. No, not for ED they don't, but that perfect little pill does. That's how Black Blue Max is getting there and finding it. So, so there you go. But yeah, that, oh, that's cool. Maybe that's why I'm getting so many stinking hits. Cause, you know, I share it on Faceplant. You're sharing it on Grumpy's. So maybe, maybe more, more, uh, more widely accessible. Yeah, now I'm on my way to 300 subscribers. Whether I ever get there or not remains to be seen. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about these people that uh, that have 3,000 and 30,000 subscribers? That seems minuscule. Well, they, they, they can do and they can have whatever they think is good for them. I, I've already well exceeded what I ever expected to, to get to. I was... I was amazed it ever got to 50. Who doubled? Somebody's got to stand by. <coughs> All right. Then nobody's going to talk. Will somebody take a chance and speak. Yeah, I was amazed when I hit 50, like I said. Now I'm 214 or something like that. And like everything else on the internet, it'll be there forever until Google decides they don't like it and try and scrub it. Never, never. Even if I reach the numbers and the goals that allows me to, I will never monetize my my page for Classic Radio Roundup. It'll never happen. I'm not wrong with making a few bucks. Not gonna do it. Nope. I I I feel strongly about that too. This is supposed to be a hobby. It's supposed to be shared, promoted, and enjoyed. Not make money off of. At least not not for this. Uh, you, you don't, you're, you're, you're not charging 
encouraging people to act. You're just you're just getting a, a you know a percentage of money for hits that, you know you know however many people hit on it. But then they're subjected to advertisements. When you monetize, you subject your viewers to advertisements. Non-monetized, they don't have to watch ads. Yeah, that's true. So, so I don't want to subject my viewers to advertisements. Thank you. Okay, uh, that's, a, that's a noble, that's a noble cause. That's that's I feel strongly about that for YouTube videos. Somebody teed up with you, Pete. And Blue Max had a question. What'd you say, Blue Max, a couple minutes ago? I don't know. I was asking you about your, about your uh, antenna. But then I said, uh, whatever you were talking about, oh, the fence, the fence uh, grabber, they don't work for you. They don't work for ED. No, ferrites don't work for ED, but the purple pill does. My far rights aren't wrapped around my, my equipment. <laughs> well, but maybe they are wrapped around my equipment. I got to rethink that statement. Oh, man. Oh, man. There's so much, so much you could do with that. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of mileage in that. And uh, for uh, Alley Cat's uh, note, Note taking notes. The first few minutes, maybe 10 of the video gate, no preamp. I'm running a preamp now, so you can see the difference. All right. In fact, if I turn it off at any point, I'll announce I turn it off. I turn it on, I'll announce I turn it on on the gate so people know. I just look at the signal and go, like, oh wow, I was a seven, no, I'm a nine. You must have the preamp on. Well, you're a 10 dB over with the preamp on this radio, and you were between a 7 and an 8 with it off. Well, there you go. Are you trying to tell me I'm not giving you enough signal? No, I didn't do it for you. I turned it on so I could hear Goose better. <laughs> I'm kidding. You're uh, up at 20 dB over to, at a meter that goes to 30. And I think I hear, like, with the preamp on, I think I'm getting kind of skip land or something going on. Yeah, there was a bunch of that nonsense in there earlier. I was thinking, because we can... Yeah. I might have to do this anyway. We were going to we were gonna run big... At some point. Yeah, you might have to do it anyway. And it's funny. You're, you, without, the, without your power, you're an S8. So... If you run power and I turn the preamp off, you're an S8. If I have the preamp on and you don't run power, you're an S8. I can never escape the S8. Nope, one way or another. But if I turn the preamp off, I guess you'd be le a lot less than S8. Yeah, probably. But then I wouldn't squeal. Oh, no. Oh, you're a five with the preamp off. But you're definitely an eight with the with the power on and the preamp off. That's funny. <laughs> well, let's see. That's uh, what six six ten dB or uh, that's three that's three S units. That's just, which means that, that meter's not very linear, but you know. Well, it's not that far off. Sixteen dB, and I, and I'm not certain it's a twenty dB preamp, but I think I'm pretty sure it is. But I'm not certain. So 16 dB, I call it a 16 dB preamp, but that don't roll off as easy. Yeah. But I mean, for... oh, bitch. <laughs> Making conversation difficult with that squeal. Yeah. I'm going to have to, uh, I guess I'm going to have to put the original cat back in it. Deal with the tinniness? I don't know. Maybe if I put the radio all back together and just put the screws in it, it may be better. It's just weird that it's intermittent like that. You know, it's, it's, it's just no, uh, no warning. And there's no, you know, it's a kind of gradual thing. It just kicks in. Like somebody flips a switch. 
Yep, yep, that's what it does. And it does sound pretty good. Uh, it does sound pretty good. So it's, it was an improvement over that tinniness. But it's a detraction with the squeal. Yeah. Well, let me just. I'm gonna. I'll put this 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 other cap in here, and then I'll uh, I'll I'll screw everything down and see what happens. Well, what happens if I go to barefoot mode? <laughs> now nobody can hear me. I can hear you. Well, I kind of figured Renegade and Alley Cat would hear me on my stock 4-watt radio. I can hear you. Hello, Rooster. But I bet Blue Max don't hear me no more. Yeah, Rooster, you got a big signal all the time, so I kind of figured you'd hear me. I know you hear me now. Who's that, Goose? Anybody leave? Goose, do you hear me? Did you hear me, Goose? Who just called me? Countywide radio on a four watts. I heard my name. Goose, do you hear the Spitfire on four watts? That wasn't you, because after you on cute, I heard Goose. The alley cat. Yeah, but I want to know if he can hear me on four watts. Ask him. I can hear Goose tonight. Yeah, I must have got on the radio before you texted me that night. Because I was out here, but the radio was dead, so I turned it back on. <laughs> well, that's all right, man. No problem. Just checking with you. Yeah, if you ever want anybody to talk to, you, just text me. I'll get on here. A lot of times I'm saying back on channel 14 or 24 or one of these. It's one of those two channels. Why on 14? What's that? Why do you hang out on 14? You like talking to Bleed Ever Bill? Yeah, I like talking to uh, the ghost. Bleed Ever Bill is actually pretty interesting. But anyway, yeah, I didn't know Sam Rock moved and got an apartment. I didn't know that because I was probably in Arizona. That's back in 2000. In 2000, I was going back, back and forth from Wire Missing to uh, Arizona. Yeah, Dave came up with the uh, name of those apartments. You probably know where they are. I just don't remember what he said. Okay, okay. I just know I came back and I went to the house. It was, like, empty. It's like, what the fuck? And all his shit was out of the yard. It's like, what the heck? Where did Sam Rock go? His house was, like, his house was, was like, walking into Satan's house, man. It was browning squeal. Yeah, he moved. What was the name of that apartment he moved to, Dave? Rolling Green Apartments. Okay. Rolling Green. Yeah, that's on, uh, I think that's on Murphy ah! Street. That's what I told you half an hour ago. I'm talking to Pete. That's what I told you half an hour ago. I didn't know the name of the apartments, but it was off of Markley Street. It's right there off of Markley. Actually, it's not Markley. It's Swede. Markley, Swede. They're the same. <laughs> I know you're going to tell me they're not, but in my mind, they are. Yeah. How long have you lived there for? I don't know. A year or two, no more. Really? I'm surprised he got rid of the house. Well, I think he kind of had to because he was falling behind. Oh, okay. I still keep in touch with his daughter and, uh, and, uh, and Junior there, he's out in Oregon or Washington, Washington, I think. Yeah, I lost contact with everybody because I didn't know he passed away. I mean, I didn't know until like a year later, maybe two years later, he passed away. But yeah, I didn't know what he died from. I just know he was cancer. But you said it was, uh, 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 what's called cancer? Um, I can't think. Lung cancer. Yeah, he went into the hospital, and within a week, he was dead. Well, you know, if you're going to go, you might as well just get it over with. Yeah, this is true. Anymore, man, you just, 
find out you got something and you're gone the next day. Yeah, I didn't really suffer none, so that's that's you know that's if I'm gonna go, just when I get noticed, just make it quick. Yep, yep, yep. My, am I am I still a mud duck? No, you're not a mud duck no more. I hear you like same as I hear Sam, but well, I got the preamp on, so he's stronger. But you're pretty good. Yeah, I don't hear him at all, so he must be back on his bases. Four pill connex. That's ridiculous. You don't hear him, Dave. Smacking it here. Oh, yeah, he's booming up here tonight. I mean, I heard him better when he was in his car. Down here. Dave says he hears you better when you're in your car. He says, right now, he can't hear you. You're a mud duck. Yeah, he hears me better out, outside on my street. But in my house, he can't hear me. I don't know why. I don't know where he got his beam pointed at here. Well, maybe try moving that antenna 10 feet left or 10 feet to the right. <laughs> maybe he's on the tampon. I'm serious. I'm not even kidding. No, I agree with you. Come on, I can move it. Well, move it. Move it 10 or 20 feet one way or the other if you can. Tell the kids to jump on the trampoline. It's kind of in the trees. So if I move it, so if I move it towards my driveway. You're talking to me or I thought you were talking to him. That's funny. You two can't hear each other. You keep banging heads. That's amazing that you two can't hear each other as strong as you're coming up here now. <laughs> if I put my antenna in the street, they'll hear me. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, one of those things. Are not. Just run the coax out to your mobile. Use the mobile antenna. He'll hear you. You hear him well, Wayne? Yeah, no problem at all. Does what? Does Goose hear you? Renegade hears me. Bagger doesn't hear me. No, but you hear Renegade. No, I can't hear Renegade. What? What? I just told her I cannot hear Renegade. When I don't have a noise level, I can hear a real, real faint. Renegade hears Goose, but Goose can't hear Renegade. Somehow that's not surprising. How about Alley Cat? Goose, you hear Alley Cat? Yeah, I can hear Alley Cat. I can hear Alley Cat. I can hear um, um, uh, Midnight Train. Is that his handle? Something Train. Whatever. And uh, Joker. I hear all them. I bet you hear Rooster, too. Rooster, speak up. Burger, burger. See, I can hear Rooster, and I can hear the guy that talks out of his truck. What the heck's his name? He talks out of a Chevy truck. He's way out there. I, I, I forget his name, his handle. Bassmaster? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he's got a good mobile setup, for sure. He's running something I'm running, the four-pill. Four-pill inside his Connex. Oh, barefoot radio. Yeah, big strong radio. Who was it last week that suggested running barefoot night? Was that Joker? Might have been. I guess we gotta wait till he shows up. Where's he at? Has he been in here? This is barefoot. I've not heard him yet. I can't hear him. He's barefoot. This is barefoot right here. I hear you barefoot. Yeah, but your radio's deaf, because I was trying to call you barefoot, and you can't hear me. But my, my radio's ain't even above my house. Your radio's not above your house? I hope not. I hope it's in front of you. I said the radio's, the ground, the, my ground plane. I'm going to throw it out the window. It's about like 25 feet off the ground. So? 
If I hear you barefoot, you should be able to hear me barefoot unless you've got some kind of noise level. Hold on, I go barefoot. Let me see. Goose, goose, goose. Calling the goose, goose, goose. Spitfire, barefoot. Gregor? Can you go barefoot? Yeah, I'm barefoot. Can you hear me or what? You can't hear me, can you? All right, how about with the baby driver? Can you hear me now? Three pounds of noise. Can you hear me now on a baby driver? Well, somebody keeps trying to step on me, so that ain't helping anything. Yeah, pretty strong, dude. I get what you're saying. Well, that's because somebody's trying to play games, but you should be able to hear me on the baby driver. Elaborate back. All right, I'm done playing. I'm done playing. It doesn't take a real man to step on a four watt radio. No, no, it doesn't. I noticed they don't try it when I got the big boy on. If you're a real man, you gotta step on me now. Try and step on me now if you're a real man. If not, go crawl back into your hole. You don't know who's who. You don't know who's what. You don't know what's going on. You don't have a clue. Oh, well, he tries, but this time he just blew them away. Yeah, they, oh, you could try. But, uh, yeah, not not what I got going on with my 85-foot antenna and what I got going into it now. No, you can, you can try. But you're just going to, you know, go home crying. That's right. That's right. 70 amps I'm drawing on a dead key. 70 amps on a dead key? Wow. Well, you know, I'm not fooling around. That's right. That's right. I'm not fooling around. And, and the funny thing is, is, let's see, uh, yep, I got 3 dB more I can go. Yeah, well, when I got a Newman, when I got my, my big old, big old thousand dollar Newman, then I'll be like Gene. But until then, I'm just me. Gene Gene, the dance machine. It only gets worse. Yeah, I don't have a thousand dollars to spend on a microphone. Sorry. You notice I never actually say what I'm running. Just told you how much current I'm drawing, and there's 3 dB more to go. So unless you could, if you can't do math, you've got no clue. You, you don't know what's going on. You don't know nothing. Why? It's, it's Verkin? Well, so far the squeal hasn't shown up. Just by putting a cover back on? Put the cover back on and bolted it all down again. Well, so far so good. Yep, knocking on simulated wood grain vinyl. Yeah, I know it's going to come back though. It's going it's to do that just to, just, to, just to haunt me. Only if we keep talking about it. If, if we call it dead, then we can quit talking about it and not worry about it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm on a different radio than last week, but you can pretty much tell. Well, I started out with the original cap in there and then switched it, so I'll have to listen to the video game. This, uh, you know, being a weird, you know, CB phone, all that aside, it's a pretty good performer. 
it's probably similar to the TRC-24. It's just uh, packaged in a different, you know, different case. And, you know. Yeah, it's got a nice big S meter, too. It's better than a regular mobile meter. Oh, yeah, it's got the same size meter as the TRC-30. And the same exact meter as the TRC-441. And the 440, probably, because I think the 440 and the 441 are the same, except one's analog and one's digital. And the 431, too, also has that meter. So, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't stub my nose at these these uh, CB phone radios anymore. Well, yeah. I mean, I thought it was kind of funny, because I knew people that had them, and then they put D104s on them and run them on their bases, and like, you know, why you got a telephone radio, then you just defeated the whole purpose. Well, you get what you can afford at the time, or what's available. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people, well, I was in that circumstance, you know, I, 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 whatever came across, and I could afford it. Yeah, but that's just it. Those things cost more money, you know, if you're paying for the prestige of having a telephone head against that. Oh, as opposed to a regular mobile at the time, like a comparable, say the twenty four, was it the twenty four C? So, so they, I guess they were sold at the same time. So this one costs more than that. Yeah, yeah. So you, you know, you're paying for features. Ah. You know, feature. you know as, as silly as it might be, it's still a feature. Yeah, yeah. I suppose you're right. It is. It is a back then, I guess, a premium feature. Yeah, and the funny thing is, is there's people that were awed by that at, at the time. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Shallow people are very easy to be awed by things like that. Well, I guess these days, though, they're, they're you know, you see one for cheap, grab it, because they're good working radios. It'll love you a long time. I guess you can impress your friends. Look at my radio telephone. Look, it's got a headset. Yeah, exactly. Mount it on the, uh, the transmission hump of your car and, you know, make, make, make calls and tool them down the road with the handset in your hand. And it's like, look at it. This guy must be a big theater, man. He's riding around in his little car phone. So you think it's basically the same as a 24C, which I happen to have. That's funny. I think it's very similar. I don't know if it's identical or not, but it's probably close. You know, the volume and squelch knobs are exactly the same. Obviously, the Delta Tune is switch is the same. There's only two push buttons on the 24C, but they're same as the push buttons on this. And, and the channel selector... It looks really damn close. Yeah, I mean, it's made by the same people. I don't know if it's the exact same chassis. <laughs> the 24C, I think, had the same chassis as the TRC-38 base. Yeah, one was the mobile version, one was the base version. But I don't know. You know they, they shoved that in there, too. I'll have to see if I can find the schematic to two of them and see if they can do it. <laughs> Yeah, there's got to be slight differences at a minimum. It may be the same chassis with some some additions because it's got the, you know, the extra switch between, uh, you know, you can use the, the 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 internal speaker, you can use the handset speaker, or both. Yeah, exactly. You can, you can make it like a phone or make it like a radio. Or both, where it'll come through the the speaker and the in the radio and the handset. So either or or both. Yeah. But this this radio is well used. I, I think my stepfather used this a lot while traveling or whatever because all, all the lettering is starting to wear off. It's hard to read. Well, he used it then. <laughs> yeah, I know he used it. He did a lot of 
cross country traveling, and he always he's always had CB radios in the car. My kind of guy. That's where my Cobra nineteen came from. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't a hobbyist like we are, but he always had CB radios in his mobiles just because, you know, you know, channel nineteen basically. My dad always had ham radios in the car. <laughs> no, nope, I'm the first ham and well, no, I'm not. My grandfather was a ham. I'm the second ham in the family that I know of. My the closest thing to a radio my father ever had was uh was a two megahertz uh, marine band radio. That's kinda cool too, in a way. Just to get to play with that. Yeah, I did get to play with that when I was like seven years old. Yeah, and the band goes long at night. Yeah, I could hear guys in New York talking. That was, like, cool. Oh, yeah, I would have been sucked in by that for sure. Yeah, you know, I was sitting there in Atlantic City, and, uh, you know, all of a sudden I'm hearing boots in New York. Oh, I'd have been freaking fascinated by that. Hey, did any of you guys stop one of those, make one of those yeah. it was It was kind of interesting. But during the day, man, it was just heterodyne city. It, was, it sounded like CB with the skip in there. Come again, Blue Max. Did any of you guys uh, make one of those deep things with the toilet paper rolls with the uh, uh, dexiometer kind of a thing? Heath kit toilet paper potentiometer roll. What? Did I get that right? I guess you're talking about a crystal radio. Uh, I've made crystal radios, but not that, not a Heathkit one. And I know what you're saying about the toilet paper roll or the paper towel roll form for the wire form. I guess that's what you're referring to? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I've made crystal radios. It's a little bit different style. But yeah, I don't know if anybody else has. I made one with a kid once. I made a one-tube regen receiver. Remember that thing I made? Yeah. Got 50 bucks for it on eBay. Yeah, I made one with, you know, it wasn't the crude kind. You know, it had, uh, I had a, a furry rod antenna and a, and a tuning capacitor and a regular uh, germanium diode. And then a crystal earphone that I'd listen to. And uh, that thing worked really good, man. I could I could put a long wire antenna on there. I could hear KYW and WFIL and IBG and it's like wow, this is working good. And it doesn't and it doesn't need any power. <laughs> I thought it was fascinating by that. Yeah, that's the part that's fascinating. I think I had a realistic uh, crystal radio kit that I put together. And I was fascinated by that too. Like, those, there's no no power to this thing, and I could hear these stations. But I was more fascinated by the regen radios because it was using a tube, but I was only using 12 volts of power for the filament and and, and the plate. And I could wind different size coils and hear everything from AM broadcast all the way up to CB radio. No power CB. That was awesome. And then I sold the thing on eBay for fifty dollars, which even was more fascinating. <laughs> and now I wish I could find the stinking schematic I had for it, because I want to build another one because I miss it. I can't find the stinking schematic, but it was a single twelve AU seven, I think it was. Google is your friend. I bet you could find uh, something online. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can. I was fascinated by the fact that, that a tube would work with only 12, 12 volts on the plate. Yeah, yeah, that would have got me too, because I'm thinking, every time I think of tubes, I think high voltage. Right, right. I'm like, this thing ain't going to work on, like, okay, 12 volts on dual filament, you know, it's six volts of filament. 
but on the plate? Really? This isn't going to work, but it did. Yeah, there you go. Kind of like to build one just, just to, like, pair up with the multi Mac or something, just for fun, just to say that I'm using a homemade receiver. I mean, there was a radio, there were quote-unquote portable, with the, with the air quotes here, portable radios that used to run on, like, 30-volt batteries or something that were due. Yeah, hang on, Blue Max. I didn't, I didn't understand that. Say that again. Were those two uh, made especially for low voltage, or were they, were they the same thing that you used in any TV or a regular radio? A regular, regular old 12 AU7 tube that you would use in any any radio receiver or whatever. Yep, and it worked on low voltage. I got a couple of them radios here, Dave, that I've been threatening to uh, to uh, restore. They're AM portable radios, quote unquote, and they use these like you know one, you know that you know numbers, you know one one volt filament tubes or whatever, and it's got uh, I think uh, it's got one D battery for the filament and one of those B B plus batteries that you stick in there, but it wasn't a full B plus. It was like a smaller one. I think it was like 30 some volts on these square batteries that goes in it. And it's portable. A AM radio, tube radio. I keep threatening to get one of them working. I got a couple different ones and I I need to get one of them working just because. How many tubes are in it? Uh, I don't know. I got one sitting here. Hang on. <laughs> The one that I got sitting here that I want to get working, it's a Motorola, and it's Bakelite, portable, and it has a flip open front, volume and tuner, and it has a flip open back, and I flip open the back, model 5A9M by Motorola, operates from 117 volts AC, because it has a plug, or self-contained batteries, which is the A batteries, which uh, takes two two A batteries, in, in 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 quotes, one and a half volt flashlight cells, ever ready nine fifty or equivalent, blah 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 blah. Uh, and then it's let's see, the open A battery compartment catches C to. What's the other battery? Oh, maybe there isn't another battery. It's oh yeah, it's just oh yeah. There's a B battery. There it is, a B, a sixty-seven point five volt B battery, and uh, to two D batteries they call an A's, and a B battery sixty-seven point five volts. How many tubes? Oh oh, four. Not bad. A one R five, a one U four, a one S five. And a 3S4. Yeah, three volt, uh, three volt filaments and one volt filaments. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, it's complete. The stinking thing is complete. Uh, except for the AC cord has been cut. But the battery compartments are all there. And the, and the, and the, the B, the B plus battery looks like a big giant nine volt battery connector it has the same kind of things that fit on a nine volt battery but they're a little bit bigger and it's like of course it's wide as crap yeah they are so at a minimum i can either make a power supply for it or run it on ac if i fix the cord but i got a couple of these things but this one i want to get going especially because it's a motorola where did you get that at uh, the Kutz, Kutztown Fest. They were uh, trash picks. <laughs> Things in really good shape, too, physically, and all the tubes are in it.
train is on the track, guys. Oh, well, there he is. Good evening. Hey, train. Hey, Rich. It's been a long time since I heard you. Bagger, Pete, who else is in there? Train. Train. Hello, Knight of the Train. Oh, wow, well, the alley cat is in there. Where you at, alley cat? I was right here, man, on my 23 channel Trinidad. You sound nice, man. Thank you, sir. Did they tell you it sound nice? Yeah, I think they did. I think Dave and Pete said I sound pretty good. You do. What you running tonight, Pete? Bagger? TRC 56, CB phone 23. Is that the one with the telephone handle? That's the one. Hey, 10 4. What about you, Bagger? I wanted the uh, JC Penny that I ran last week, but I wanted to change a cap in there to maybe get a little bit uh, less tinny out of it. 10 Roger. Yeah, did you change the cap? Yeah, I did earlier. It is less tinny, man. Yep. Yeah, isn't that something? One cap. Where was it? In the audio circuit? Yeah, it was just, it was just a uh, series coupling cap uh, right off the mic plug. Right at ground. And uh, it was a 0.22 microfarad, and I jumped it up to a 2.2. Tim Roger, yeah, you did the right thing, man. <laughs> you got that under control. I look for you in, uh, you know, the, the count uh, this morning, man. I didn't find y'all. Well, the count is on the road, um, and I've been uh, extremely busy with work, so, you know, there was no time for that. I hear that out there. Well, I'm on the sonar 2340. Just in case you record, Pete. Just in case. I am. What you on tonight, Rooster? I was on my Ruiz earlier, but I'm on my 2547 now. Roger that. Yeah, come on. Lafayette. 
I sent it out, man, and the, uh, the guy told me that the, one of them IF transformers between the driver and the uh, the final is bad. There's a capacitor and a coil inside, and uh, I guess the capacitor must have went. Uh, what was wrong with that radio? That, that's the one that you couldn't get any transmit power out of? Yeah, I lost my transmit. He found a burnt uh, resistor in line with that. And the only component he figured it had to be inside of that can. That's interesting. Because if it's drawing enough current to burn up a resistor, then that probably burned up the, the coil in that transformer, too. Which means something else shorted out that caused that. Yeah, yeah, something else shorted out. He found a capacitor that was already replaced once. Uh, yeah, I hope he don't put everything back together and it burn up again. But I think this is the second time because he said that one capacitor was new. Yeah, you know, see, that's why, uh, you know, uh, when you have a radio that old, it's probably a good idea to replace all the electrolytics. And that way, uh, you know, you, you kind of avoid that problem. Well, that's just it. All the electrolytics were replaced before I even purchased it. Yeah, well, every now and then, a, uh, a non-electrolytic can go uh, south of the border, too. 10-4. Well, I sure hope you get it right. Because we ordered an IF transformer for that. Yeah, but imagine they're not going to be easy to find. No. In fact, you're correct. We had to get it out of a, a parts radio. Yep. That's why I got a couple of... Uh, uh, donor radios over here with Panasonic chassis, just in case. My Comstat needs. Uh, I, I already pulled an IF can out because the uh, there's uh, capacitors that, could, that are in parallel with the with the IF uh, coil, and it kept changing. You know, and all of a sudden the receiver would get weaker, and I'd retune it, and it would come back again, and then uh, it would get weak again. I you know, would retune it again, and it was the same coil. It's um, kept going out of tune, and it's like, well, it's drifting, and coils don't drift. So I figured it was the cap in parallel with it, and I said, well, rather than just play with the caps, I'll just yank this, this other IF can out of this this parts radio I've got, and I stuffed that in there, and, you know, that was the end of the problem. That's beautiful. Did you have to tune it and everything? Yeah, you, of course you have to tune it once it's in there, but then once I did that, it didn't drift anymore. Stayed, stayed good. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, so I, I, that's one of my favorite radios. I told him, listen, just go ahead and do it, you know. I, I don't really want to lose that one. No, that's a good one. And he's not sure if that's really a Panasonic chassis. Is that true or false? The, uh, the 444. A little different from the others. Yes, they are different, and I don't think they're uh, Panasonic. They, they, that may be uh, uh, Toshiba or something. But they're really similar, but they're they're actually a step above. Yeah, because he said he has a Nuvaster in here. That's right. Yeah, I've got a I've got an HP 400 over here that's got a Nuvaster in it. I got it from Gene years ago, and he robbed some of the parts out of it. I was going to rebuild this stinking thing and uh, use parts from uh, some of my donors, but I never got around to doing it. I don't have a, I don't have a case for it either, so it's like, yeah, it's just sitting here. So you had the transformer that I needed. Uh, possibly. Yeah, because that's where we got it out of, HB 400. How about that? So is it kind of quiet tonight and somber tonight, or just what? Or did I just come in at a low on the action? Well, they're all getting to be like uh, Green Dragon. They hear you come in there and everybody leaves. I see. Then they disappear so I can have a frequency all by myself. That's right. 
Well, I hear a sound for the border. Yeah, there was a bunch of skip in there earlier, but I think uh, I think the down getting kind of went down to a dull roar. There's like a port of Mexico Cuban thing going on on Channel One, like it's unbelievable. Like they sound like locals. Doesn't sound like skip. They might have just came down to one. You know, they even the even the Spanish speaking people in Reading actually talk on Channel Nine. They might have came down to get some peace and quiet. No, I know Channel Nine and Channel Five are are definitely headquarters, but. This is, like, unbelievable, man. I never heard them so clear. Uh, they're on Channel 1, but I don't know. Whatever. I am four. Gee. A friend of mine's been telling me, man, they sound like they're moving in, they're moving in, and I'm like, well, they can move in. He goes, but well, it sounds like they're taking over the airways. They might just take the whole thing. You know, we'll be minorities. Damn illegals. Yeah, but we haven't deserted you completely. Hold the wall, damn it. A second. On 13. I don't mind you coming in. Just come in through the front door. And four. That's right. If you're going to climb in the window, you're, you're gonna, I'm going to shut the window on you. I'm going to do more than shut the window. Or excuse me, the window. You're coming in through the window. You're going to meet my uh, 45 ACP. This is what's going to happen. Coming through the front door, I may welcome you in or I may turn you away, depending on your demeanor. And whether he brings beer. Oh, well, if you bring beer, come on in. Yeah, I'm hearing all kinds of Puerto Mexican Cubans in there myself right now. Yeah, I'm not hearing much. Thankfully, the beam's away. I even heard them on the low antenna garage radio. You know, low antenna doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to work. Just depends what what you're gonna be able to work. Yeah. You work your neighbors and Puerto Mexican Cubans. Unless it's on forty meters, then you can work three hundred miles. It's stronger than your neighbors. At least three hundred miles. Yeah, yeah, I've been using that antenna since I put it up well, the other day there, Dave, and that, that thing's a winner. So it's working better than your big uh, big wire for uh, 40, huh? Yeah, yeah, I remember that the other day I got on there and I, on 40, and I was called CQ on AM, and, and Timtron came back to me in Maine. That's That's 500 miles away. And I went back and forth, uh, A, B, and I saw a zero difference in the signal. They were exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of strange in of itself. But yet, old Tim Tron up in Maine, <laughs> he was he was strongest on my 10-foot off the ground, 40-meter dipole. Yeah, there you go, man. Every situation's different. You know, we've always lived by that mantra, height is might. But that's not necessarily true in 40 meters. Yeah, I was kind of impressed with that. You know what you guys were telling me about that 40 meter van. There's a video gate of it there, Train. When I was in the Allegheny National Forest, talking with Sandbagger and Renegade. Oh, yeah. Yeah, God, they're right. they're having no trouble making the trip. None at all. I hired Wayne at 10 dB over S9. About as strong as you are here now and stronger than he is here now. Yeah, it's bizarre. I got 
somebody that's warming up at 727. What's a 747? That sounds like an airplane to me. Yeah, the noise sounds like a jet engine. I'm serious. And it's flying up and it changes pitch. Just like a jet engine. Is there a piece of equipment in your house that, that might be operating like an air conditioning unit? I found I found noise coming from out of the light switch that operated the LED overhead uh, light in the in the main foyer. Man, it was one of them kind of had the built-in digital type dorm dimmer, and uh, eventually it went and it stayed gone too because uh, I didn't have it fixed and I didn't fix it. And it took the noise out of my system. Well, in the Allegheny National Forest, I can tell you that 40 meters was so quiet. It was beautiful. Well, it's nice that you had somebody to talk to. Yeah, I got to keep keep Dave and uh, Sandbagger, or uh, Dave and Renegade all, all praised to my travels while I was traveling. Keeping the fort down on Classic Radio Roundup, man, it was it was like all of the key characters were missing in action. Well, we we were holding Classic Radio Roundup on with on Classic Radios on forty meters. Oh, I think the seven hundred six is probably almost a classic. Well, yeah, they're they're pretty much getting on twenty five years, ain't they? 36 is a classic, too. That's right. My 746 Pro isn't quite there yet, though. It's, it's considered old, I guess, but not that old. Yeah, but we were talking like we were talking here. Yeah, no problem. No pain or strain. That was pretty cool. That really was. That'll, that'll be in my memory bank forever. Right here. It was fun. It was awesome. You guys have a break out there. Go ahead, Breaker. Breaker. Come on, Break. Ah, thank you. Hey, Pete, when you're talking this, about Sam Rocky earlier, who are you talking to with a Roger Beep? I wasn't talking with nobody with a Roger Beep. The Roger Beep was trying to cut my lips off with no success. Oh, I'll be talking to him with Roger Beep. I was trying to figure who that was. All I heard was the Beep. That was it. Yeah, yeah, they were trying to be somebody that they're not. Let me guess, you're talking to Goose again. Yeah, that's the Goose. I can't, I really can't believe you can't hear him. Not at all. That's pretty amazing for the signal strength he's given me. I mean, I could actually almost make out Blue Max. He's right in my noise, but I, I get nothing from Goose. Nothing. I wouldn't know he was in there unless somebody told me. I can hear Goose pretty good tonight. But yet you could hear him in his mobile when he was a grasser to me. That's right. I could hear I could hear him pretty good. I mean, he was weak, but I could hear him and I can understand him. I can't hear him at all now. I'm hearing him real well. Hello there, Goose. You don't hear me. Goose, don't you hear the night train calling you? Yeah, he must have. It sounded like he had commotion in the house anyway. Those darn kids. I got a big copy on it. Come again there, Blue Max. Where is it? Oh, I got a big copy on it. Not great, but I hear it. Goose is down around uh, King of Prussia, Devon area, down that way. So, so Blue Max can hear Goose, not well, but he hears him, and Dave can't hear him at all. I hear Goose really good tonight. 
Do you hear the goose tonight? Wayne, Wayne says he does. Yeah, he gave me a nice signal. His audio is good. I hear him good tonight, but he can't hear me. And I'm running my amplifier. All right, uh, Pete, talk to Goose. I, I'm, I'm going to video gate this, and uh, I will show you how I don't hear him. Goose. Goose, where you at there, Blue? Uh, just Goose. He's distracted. Hey, Goose, tear away from the wife for a minute and, and, and reply. You never say that, Pete. Oh, that's what it sounded like. His wife was, was taking control. and We want to know who wears the pants in that household. Back here, not right now. He's not in there. Yeah. But know the difference. Yeah, he's not answering. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll stop that until he comes back. There's no point in video gating something that's not there if it's not even there anyway. Uh, I guess not. He's got an attention span of a gnat. <laughs> a drunken gnat. Man, yeah, none of that worked. Man, none of that worked. He's just busy looking at the rindo. Yeah, and he's checking his tra trail voltmeter. Yeah, he threw his trail volt power supply out the rindo. Yeah, and that's, that's that. Yeah, all, all his W's become R's. There was a couple other words he said tonight that were not... that. that he pronounced as an R. Yeah, all his W's are R's. So, so basically, Wayne becomes Rain. My W is not yours. It's like the Germans. W is V and V is W. So Volkswagen is Volkswagen. Well, I'll have to get uh, Green Dragon to... Uh, it is. And, and BMW is not BMW in Germany. It's BMV. When I, when I heard my German friends tell me they had a, a BMV, oh, well, who's a BMV? That's the Department of Motor Vehicles. No, oh, it's Bavarian Motor Verks. Yeah, but it's pronounced Volkswagen. By Erica. By Erica, not Bavarian. By Erica, Volkswagen. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, here's a Ducci for you. Hootena. That was Blue Max, uh, Bagger. As you didn't hear it. I can, I can just make him out. Yeah, he's, he's right in, right in my noise level. Even if you rock the beam one way or another, you couldn't pick him up more. Oh yeah, I can turn the beam around, and I can get probably get Blue Max at almost S nine if I turn it around. But you know, the control box is in the garage. Oh, I keep forgetting your control box is uh, out there. Yeah, I was just thinking, rock it a few degrees one way or the other. Oh yeah, yeah, I could, I could fix that. I don't I think I could fix Goose by moving the beam because the beam's basically in his direction already. That's amazing to me, though. That that's I, I can't wrap my head around that. Yeah, whatever, wherever he's got that antenna, there's some some kind of uh, multi path or something that's just canceling out the signal in my direction or reflecting it somewhere. Yeah, because as strong as he's coming up here, he's coming up here stronger now than he ever has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If 123 comes in there and is mobile, I'll hear him, but I won't hear Goose. And his signal's always less than Goose. Not to me. <laughs> to me, he is. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it on the gate. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I have seen it on the gate. Yeah, where 123 is lesser than Goose. 
23 gives me a 7, and I don't hear goose at all. Yeah, and I don't get no kind of 7 off of 123 ever. I was, this was last week, I guess, when I was on this radio. That That is a, another one that, that it's hard to wrap my head around. I usually can't hear goose at all. But tonight I'm hearing him with four bars. Wow. But he doesn't hear you. <laughs> yeah, correct. He's not hearing me. But I'm looking at my linear, and it's like, uh, I, it looks like I have backwards modulation. That means you're driving it too hard. You running that tube amp? No, I'm running uh, the uh, RL300. And I'm running on low, but it's showing backwards modulation. Show me about uh, about 50 watts uh, dead key, but it's swinging back to 40. How much are you driving it with? Two and a half watts. Oh, oh, all right. And and what, what are you on? Uh, what radio are you using? You're using that Ranger. Yes, correct. I'm, I'm running the Ranger, and I've got it on the CB antenna. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, that Ranger is not too much power drive, but you, you ought to you ought to try that uh, one tuber. That'll be happier with that two and a half watts. What's the uh, peak uh, power rating for that amp, Wayne? Well, it says with. Uh, 10 watts of drive, I should be getting like 150 out of it on uh, AM. Well, then, yeah, that's, yeah you, you got too much dead key then. Because uh, 50 watts dead key should, you know, you'd have to be able to have headroom to at least 200 watts. And if it's only going to 150, then you're, 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 you're out of headroom. So your, your dead key power has to put it somewhere like around you know, 30 watts or something. Oh, that's weird. Because I'm showing right now, if, if I turn the amp off, it goes to two and a half watts. Right now, it's on, and I'm showing 45 watts of dead key, but I'm back swinging. Yeah, you should use that one tuber. It'll do the same peak power. And it'll love that two and a half watts drive. It should give you around 30 watts dead key, and it'll swing to 125 to 150. Well, actually, I think something blew in the in the amp because if I put it on high, it it, it doesn't it doesn't doesn't change. That's weird. You talk about the solid state or the tuber. Solid state. Yeah, use the tuber on low. I'm telling you, the tube amp is better than any of them quote unquote questionable solid state modern amps. Well, there, I just, uh, I just switched it on to high, and I'm seeing the, the meter doing the exact same thing. Dead key in about 45 watts and swinging backwards. Uh, that, would, that would suggest that your input attenuation isn't working. Yeah, and that, that tube amp won't swing backwards on you with two and a half watts drive, guaranteed. Yeah, if you keep the carrier power down to 30, 35 watts, no, it should go forward. Yeah, that's that's the way it was before. I, I don't know what's what changed. Yeah, you certainly aren't overdriving it with two and a half watts. That's, you know, but uh, it almost seems like the uh, the low power attenuation is not working and you're on high power, even though, you, don't, you know, you, the switch says low. That's why I like tube amps. There's nothing wrong with solid state as long as you, uh, you know, understand the limitations. Well... The older solid state amps, yeah. Some of these new ones, mm, I'm not a fan. Oh, the ones with the MOSFETs in them? Yeah, I agree with you. What's wrong with the MOSFETs? They 
suck. Say what? Try that. They suck. I'm too easy. Who are you calling? I don't know. I'm just talking. Oh, how do you like that? You talk about sucking, and there comes the goose out of the woodwork. I'm bad, you and drums off. just discussing that and we can't figure it out other than there's some geographical geographical obstruction well yeah that is kind of obvious i mean he does have a he's in the middle of a bunch of hills he's got like one opening and it kind of points directly west so you guys might be just a little bit north of where his where his signal goes but then again he's got other obstructions too um where his antenna is at right now but Hopefully we're going to put it up another 10 or 15 feet, so I think that might take care of it. Yeah, start talking to Goose, because I'm, I'm rolling the gate again. And I hear you as strong or stronger than I hear Goose tonight. And you're the strongest I've ever heard you tonight, 123, top of the evening. Oh, yeah, top of the evening. I, I, I'm surprised me. I wonder, I wonder why that is. That's weird. I didn't really do anything different. I mean, I'm running my, I'm running my Echo. Oh. I know what it is. It's a new power mic. I got this, uh, this new handheld D104. Are you at the same location you usually are at? Like up there and around, uh, what is it, the iFly or whatever up there? Yep, yep, yep. Actually, I'm on the end of that, that hill, right next to Dick's and uh, right behind the, uh, what's that, Sea Breeze or whatever um, restaurant. Yeah, because usually, where it, normally you give me like a five or a six, Tonight, you're a seven swinging an eight. Goose goose is an eight. So I don't hear, have any trouble hearing either one of you. Bagger hears you fine, but he can't But he can't hear Goose. But I hear Goose pretty, pretty good on his uh, trampoline antenna. Yeah, I hear one, two, three tonight, too. Yeah, that surprises me because when I'm out there in Limerick, Goose has hit me with like 10 pounds. Yeah, Goose comes up to me, no trouble. All right, all right, get Goose to talk to you, because Bagger wants to gate the fact that uh, he can't hear him. Yeah, copy, copy, okay. What's up, Goose? Attention span of a gnat. Hello there, one, two, three, train waving. Hey, what's happening, train? I'm sitting right here copying the map. Ten four, ten four. All right, yeah, who else is out here? Anybody else out here? There was quite a few of us in there. Yeah, I heard Misfit Key up in there. I'm not a Joker, Joker, and Rooster out there. Hey, is that Misfit in the in the uh, excavator? In the highway machine. I saw I saw him today on my way home from work. Where are you at, Misfit? In the excavator. Misfit in the excavator, Breger. Yeah, I was coming home today on 422 westbound, uh, about 715 or 720, and I saw you working that excavator. I saw that antenna on there. <laughs> yeah, you're on the other side. I'm on the other side of the road from where you were going. Yeah, yeah, but I saw the work crew out there, and I was keeping an eye out for you, 
and I seen you working that excavator. You were you were working it. You were on the road, and you were turning, and and then that that the ant- antenna gleamed in the sunshine. I saw you. Yeah, right on. It's the, I was hoping you'd pop in here tonight so I could let you know I got an eyeball on you on my way by. It's too funny. Well, top of the evening to you there, Misfit. Nice to, nice to meet your acquaintance, even if it was at uh, 70 miles an hour. Wayne, you got that meter on average power or peak power? Average. Put it on peak. All right. There we go. Now it seems to be working right. Now you want it on average. Ah, you want it on peak if you want to see the swing. Yeah, but it makes your eyeballs happier. Well, yeah, but it does make your brain happier. <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess I'm an unhappy brain because I always keep my meter on peak, not average. Average makes me annoyed. I'm always using the bird on you know, average meter. If it starts to go back, I know I'm overdriving. Well, you know, if I put my... my average meter on when I'm running the, the B&W, it shows backswing. And I know it's not backswing. And I put it on peak and it works like it should. Well, if it's on average and it's backswinging, it's backswing. Well, it swings forward on everybody else's meter and I never yet had an audio or, or, or single complaint. I don't necessarily have to. I mean, if you have slight backswing, nobody's going to say anything about it. It's not going to sound bad, but it just means that your forward power and your uh, the negative power are out of balance. Uh, there's more there's more negative than there is positive, so it backswings. Now, see, you see, I, I I need to discuss that then because I had a guy that I was talking to in in Vermont who had a oscilloscope coming off his IF of his receiver, and he said I had a beautiful waveform on that B and W. And my, my peaks were outstripping my negatives. But yet, 
according to what you said, Demeter says another story. But this guy's receiver with his O-scope coming off his IF says another story. So what story do you believe? Uh, I don't know if I would trust something coming off an IF. First of all, you know, uh, it's hard to really tell if, if the waveform is good or not uh, because it's, it's voice and not a signal. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't like the way average meters read ever. Even when things I know are set up right, and the oscope says one thing, the average meter tells me something different than the peak meter, and I never liked, never liked average meters. PEP is working for me now. My, my meter's reading the right way. Well, define right. <laughs> now, you know, when you're when you're using a peak meter, and you gotta well, see, here's the, here's the complexity of the whole thing. Most peak meters, unless you have an external power supply to run the meter, is not a true peak anyway. It's a quasi peak, so you're not getting a true four to one reading anyway. It's closer to a three to one. So, you know, you got to keep that in mind that you know. Uh, if you're putting out 50 watts, that you should see 200 watts on a peak, or it's not going to be four to one. And it's hard to see that on a, on a quasi peak meter. All, all I know is I've I've done the O scope thing and matched it against my average meter and my peak meter, and the average meter always makes me annoyed. Where the oscilloscope I look at makes me happy. And the peak meter makes me happy. So I'm going with whatever keeps me happy. Well, yeah, peak meter's making me happy now. Yeah, I know. Well, the peak meter lies to you, so... <laughs> if lies make you happy, that's fine. <laughs> well, you know lies don't make me happy. You, you know that. I mean, I'm, I'm an engineering kind of mind, but... I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I try to do that four to one thing as best I can and set up with the O scope and all that. But maybe maybe my meter's just a cheesy average peak meter. I, I don't know, which is probably the case, but I know which one doesn't look right and which one does look right. So whether I'm I'm being fooled or not is maybe another issue, but I, I don't know. I, I I don't know. And it's making Wayne happy, so let's let's keep the man happy. Yeah, whatever works, I guess. But you know, I always use the average meter as the as the ball, the bellwether standard. You know, if, if you key up and it, it and it goes to a certain place, and when you talk, it it either doesn't move at all or moves slightly forward, then you're then you're you're balanced. But if it moves backwards, then you're a little bit up, you're a little bit unbalanced. Uh, and right now I'm looking at my bird and I'm going slightly backwards too. So this radio, this radio doesn't have much in the way of forward, but uh, you know it's, it's the way it is. But it's only slightly backwards, so it's not something to worry about. So how do you rectify if I set up the O scope in the two divisions and I modulate and I get the four divisions? And the average meter goes backwards, but the peak meter goes forwards. How do you rectify that? The peak meter will always go forward. So is the average meter lying to me, or am I not getting the whole truth somewhere? Uh, well, it's possible that the average meter might be, uh, might possibly, well, it depends on the meter, I guess, it could possibly be messed up in some way. I don't know. I used to use it in bird, but <clears throat> if you uh, if you truly have a, a four to one peak to peak on the oscilloscope, it should theoretically not go backward or forward. It should be uh, you know, balanced. Although I, I shouldn't say that though. Uh, on, on an average meter, since you're since you have power addition going on, uh, and you've got um, on a four watt carrier, let's say. You've got one watt in each sideband, so you should get four plus two. You should end up getting almost six, you know, five and a half to six watts of, uh, of, of swing on an average meter. But, you know, I don't know. I don't see that very often. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, in all the years I've been playing radio, right, wrong, or indifferent, I never liked the way average meters read.
So I've always used peak reading meters, but I've never had a bird meter in any way, shape or form or any other way. So my, mine are less than bird meters anyway. So, so, you know, maybe that's part of the problem. I got a bird meter. Yeah. I have a fairly decent peak reading meter over here. I have this B&K test set and it, you know, it has a power supply on it and it's pretty darn good. I looked at it on the, on the scope and it tracks pretty well with the scope. That's probably one of the few peak meters that I actually trust. So anyway, all, all that aside, what do you, what do you see on the on the peak reading meter for dead key and peak power there, Wayne? All right, here's dead key, and that's showing me thirty five watts. Oh, and then it's going it's swinging forward to eighty watts now. Yeah, that's still not not right. But at least it looks better to your brain. No, that's about right. I, now I'm just, uh, I keep up, uh, it's showing me 25 watts and swinging to 80. Yeah, 25 should show you 100. 35 should show you 140. Well, that's true. If it's that three to one that you're talking about, it's probably what it's showing him now. This is an amateur grade uh, Daiwa meter. But no external power to the meter. No, I'm actually, it's, it's, it's hooked to my power supply too. Oh, the meter's powered? Yes, correct. If it doesn't have power, it doesn't give me correct readings. Oh, so maybe that is a true peak reading then. Oh, yeah, that, that puts a different light on things. Yes, it does. Classic Radio Roundup, where you actually might learn something. That is correct. Specifications are subject to change. Terms and conditions may apply. And uh, with that, I'm going to say goodnight. It's about that time. It's now 20 minutes past the big hour of 10 o'clock. Is it? No, 18 minutes past the big hour of 10 o'clock. And i got to hit the old uh, sheets there. So we'll catch everyone later. And, uh, yeah. Holy cow, time flies when you're having fun. I just looked at the clock. It was quarter to 10. Where did the last half hour go? In-depth uh, conversation about Yeah, so if you didn't learn anything, you weren't paying attention. Hit the rewind button and start over. That's why we have video keys. I had something to say about it, but I guess we'll do it next time. Well, the gate's still rolling, so say your piece. <laughs> the gate's still rolling. <laughs> oh, man, where was I? I? I was trying to follow along, and while I was following along, I was thinking about what I was going to say, and now, you know, he said he's going 10 7. I kind of lost my train of thought. Well, I can't help you there. I cannot help you with your own train of thought. If it got derailed, that's on you. Well, if you have a couple of minutes, I'm going to hang in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get it together. Well, I think I'm going to bow out gracefully, too, because I put in a 12-hour shift today, and I'm ready for the sheets myself. All right, I hear that. All right, all right. See you guys later. Have a good one. Talk to you next trip. All right. All right. Well, thanks for the fun on Classic Radio Roundup. The fastest two hours of my life every week. And uh, for those who can't wait, we'll see you on Sunday night. And those who can wait, we'll see you next Wednesday. County wide. 73, all. Thanks for the fun. 73 is county wide. 73 is bagger. Allie Cat, you still in there? Yeah, I'm still here. Get out y'all. I'm here. I sent you a link to a beautiful looking radio, man. I shall check my email or, or my text. I did not check it as of late. Let me dad, just real quick say, catch a Pete, catch a Dave. You still hanging in there, Wayne? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, Wayne's doing good tonight. Let me try.
try something. Now that I have this thing on on the on the, the right meter settings, let me let me switch it on high. I'm gonna key to do it. Oh, no, it seems something's blown out. I'm not, I'm not, I'm getting plenty of swing, plenty of audio, and it's going forward, but. It's only like uh, 25 watts dead key. Yeah, something don't sound right with it either. Put it back on low. There you go. It's back on low again. Look, I'm, I'm hearing a squeal. Yeah, I'm saying it don't sound right. I don't know what happened. Something don't sound right. You give me plenty of signal, but it just it doesn't have the clear audio you had a couple minutes ago. I'm sorry, I want to just interject real quick. Mr. Nitrate, I think I have a Pierce Simpson over at my storage facility. <laughs> I think I do have one. I like the idea that it has three meters on it, man. I kind of like that. 10-4? Ten 10-4, four. Ten four, it is beautiful. Go ahead there, Wayne, and uh, one, two, three. Yeah. I was just asking if anybody else heard that. What am I hearing? Halloween's audio changed, and his signal, well, obviously his signal changed because he went on high, but he put it back down on low and started squealing, he said. Yeah, something went wrong. 